Welcome to Facts for Real Videos. February 12, 2017. The biggest dam in the United States is about to give way. A call for evacuation is made for the cities below. In a last-ditch effort to reach higher ground before a wall of water surged down the valley and obliterated everything in its path, people piled into cars. It was the most dreadful time of their life for many of them. But this story actually starts in May 1957, 60 years earlier. America saw a series of floods in the 1950s. In Kansas and Missouri, the Great Flood of 1951 claimed the lives of 17 people and left a billion dollars in damage, more than 10 billion in today's currency. A year later, North Dakota experienced similar issues as Missouri once more experienced flooding. A second flood struck Connecticut in 1955, killing 87 people, and a flood in California in 1956, killing 64. The River and Harbor Flood Control Act of 1957 was enacted after the government determined enough was enough. In an effort to properly govern lakes and rivers, this act approved significant projects around the nation. The Oroville Dam in the Central Valley of California was one of these initiatives. Construction got underway immediately away, but it wasn't without its challenges. The Oroville Dam was halfway complete seven years later, in December 1964, and workers were anticipating a well-earned holiday break. However, it began to rain before they had a chance to put away their equipment. A furious downpour coming in sheets from the sky, not just a drizzle. In some areas of California, it can rain for more than a year in a matter of days. Mountains began to fall down. River banks collapse. Because they didn't expect that such intense rain would be experienced for another millennium, people called it the thousand-year flood. The reservoir began to rise behind the Oroville Dam, which was only partially constructed. The water appeared to reach the top, spill over the side, flood through the building site, and then cascade downward into the central valley. The construction workers were powerless to stop it, but fortunately, the rain stopped just in time, preventing a terrible catastrophe. The workers weren't quite so fortunate ten months later, in October 1965. Work trains had been transporting supplies to the site for a while when, in 1966, two of them collided in a tunnel. Four individuals perished in the collision, and thousands of liters of diesel exploded from the tunnel as a result, sending a billow of flame into the air. Trees started to catch fire, and a fire quickly spread throughout the nearby forest, producing so much smoke that it could be seen for miles in all directions. Not all deadly accidents that occurred while building the dam were this one. More than 30 employees have passed away at work over a 10-year period. The construction workers were happy when the project was ultimately finished in May 1967. It was a reason to celebrate for many in the Central Valley. There were celebrations for a week to honor the anniversary and prominent figures, including future President Ronald Reagan, came to give a speech. The Oroville Dam, which is taller than the renowned Hoover Dam at 235 meters, is now the tallest dam in the whole United States. It was California's tallest structure when it was being built. Hundreds of millions of cubic meters of water could be stored in the enormous dam. It would help with flooding in the winter. It would help with droughts in the summer. Even a row of generator turbines for hydroelectric power were present. But there was one crucial query that needed to be addressed. How secure was the Oroville Dam? A dam can be a dangerous structure if it lacks the required safety precautions. A wall of water will surge down the valley, killing villages and cities along the way. If the reservoir level rises too far and flows over the top, the pressure could even cause the dam to give way, unleashing a body of water similar to a tsunami. In Jumadian, China, this occurred only 10 years after the Oroville Dam was completed. 
extreme rainfall caused two dams to collapse, and the ensuing wall of water took more than 100,000 people. It's the worst dam disaster in recorded history, but it's not the only one. Around the world, hundreds of dams have either overtopped or fallen. These buildings are typically constructed with spillways to lessen the likelihood of this occurring, and the Oroville was no exception. When the reservoir fills up too much, these unique passageways with top-mounted gates can be opened. It resembles a bathroom or kitchen sink overflow hole. When it does, instead of overflowing the sides, the water pours down the hole. Two spillways existed at the Oroville Dam. The primary one was a nearly one kilometer long concrete conduit with eight floodgates at the top. 8,000 cubic meters of water were released every second when those floodgates opened. Every single minute, that amount of water would be sufficient to fill more than 150 Olympic swimming pools. An emergency spillway would be used if that wasn't enough. This emergency spillway was a small weir about six meters shorter than the dam's wall rather than a concrete channel. If the reservoir ever rose to that level, water would rush over this tiny weir's edge before it reached the top of the dam. Any water that entered the emergency spillway would fall into the river below, falling directly over the side of the slope. Although it would be an untamed, uncontrolled stream, it would quickly lower the reservoir's level and prevent the dam from collapsing. That was the plan, at least. However, the emergency spillway was never used during the first few decades that the dam was in place. Rainfall was consistently insufficient to overwhelm the main spillway. But in 2017, when California saw its wettest winter in a century, everything changed. The emergency spillway of the Oroville Dam was activated for the first time ever, and things started to go wrong right away. These headlines on February 7, five days before the evacuation of Regis, should heighten the suspense. It will have a ticking sound effect and tense music added to it. There will be a brief dap both before and after the headline. Tuesday morning saw the onset of the crisis. The reservoir had been maintained at a reasonable level for the past month or two using the main spillway, as it had done countless times before. The main spillway was functioning despite the historically high rainfall in the area. The dam employees then became aware of something. The water pouring down the main spillway had a strange disruption, as if something below the surface was catching the currents. In order to investigate, they shut the floodgates. The workmen were shocked as the water started to flow away. The canal had collapsed about halfway down the main spillway. There was an unsightly, gaping crater in the concrete, and the workers knew the damage would only worsen if they allowed the water to trickle down again. Ahead of the evacuation by three days, the reservoir level was rising once more and perilously close to the top of the dam when the main spillway was closed. It forced the workers to make a challenging choice. They might worsen the crater by reopening the main spillway. Alternately, they could allow the water to flow down the hill until it reaches the emergency spillway. They wanted to avoid using the emergency spillway if at all feasible. It had never been used before, and during the past few decades, trees had overtaken the hillside where the water was supposed to trickle down. There were also power lines there, but they would be destroyed by flooding. Reopening the main spillway was decided upon, but only partially. The workers believed that the diminished stream would be sufficient to regulate the reservoir's level without placing an undue burden on the crater. A spokeswoman stated, We do not anticipate any water going over the emergency spillway. But he was completely mistaken. Prior to the evacuation, one day not enough water was being removed by the stream due to its reduction. The reservoir level was steadily rising and in just a few hours it would reach the emergency spillway level for the first time ever. The laborers started to remove the slope in a fit of fear. 
They finished everything with plenty of time to spare by clearing the power lines and cutting down trees. The reservoir finally ascended to the top of the spillway and began to spill over the brink. The employees quickly realized that something was seriously wrong when a ragged stream of water rushed downward within seconds. A geology report had looked at the hillside when the emergency spillway was initially designed. According to the research, the hill is composed of sturdy, strong bedrock. The hill was expected to be stable when water from the spillway poured across it. However, the geology report was inaccurate. In 2017, the raging current tore at the dirt and pebbles as water rushed down the untamed mountainside. The entire slope was crumbling, and all of a sudden, the dam was in danger of a disastrous collapse. During the evacuation, a violent, unstoppable tsunami of reservoir water would surge through the valley if the crumbling hill caused the dam to collapse. More than 100,000 people were compelled to leave the Central Valley by the state. According to the California Department of Water Resources, the dam was predicted to fail within the next hour. People sought to flee in terror. Roads were congested, and peril stations had run out of fuel. People were bracing themselves for a sudden deafening roar and a wave barreling down the valley in their direction. Back at the dam, the hill was still being eroded by water that was still spilling over the edge of the emergency spillway. Without regard for the harm they had done to the concrete channel, the workers threw open the main spillway. Lowering the reservoir below the emergency spillway's level was the only thing that mattered. Before the entire slope fell, it was a race against time to see if the water would cease running down the emergency spillway. At 9 o'clock that night, the water abruptly ceased. It's simple to picture how the employees felt. The Oroville spillways had successfully discharged a significant volume of water and brought the reservoir back to a reasonable level. Therefore, they had succeeded in some form. February 13, the following day, a squadron of helicopters was dispatched to drop sandbags and boulders onto the damaged area as the hillside dried up. The fixes were successful, and the dam was deemed safe again the next day. The reservoir level was under control, and residents were welcomed back to their residences. In the Central Valley, the incident nevertheless left some damage. When the hillside collapsed, Sludge and rocks were transported downstream, harming a significant fishery. Although it was necessary to move some 9 million fish to a fishery downstream, the damage could have been far worse. A scandal then made headlines. Three environmental organizations contacted the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission a decade earlier, Friends of the River, Sierra Club, and South Yuba Citizens League. These parties were concerned about the emergency spillway of the Oroville structure and believed that the water flow down the undeveloped slope could erode the rocks and weaken the main structure. In order to prevent the hillside from eroding, these groups had petitioned the Federal Commission to cover that portion of the hill with concrete. The Federal Commission disregarded the groups and kept the dam in its current condition because this upgrade would have cost more over $100 million. Workers at the dam had previously discovered a crack in the main spillway in 2013, exactly where the crater would develop during the 2017 accident. The crack was patched up by a group of engineers, but these fixes weren't carefully examined. Two years later, during a safety inspection, the inspectors didn't bother to closely investigate that portion of the spillway. They looked at the concrete from some distance, according to a report, and might have missed a sign that would have stopped the whole situation. The California Department of Water Resources received harsh criticism at a hearing in May 2017. They had jeopardized the lives of thousands of people by ignoring a number of warning indicators. One legislator described it as horrifying. It's a mess that needs to be solved, he said. Not just the Oroville Dam had warning signs been disregarded. 
A dam had officially outlived its useful life if it was older than 50 years. The majority of American dams, according to a 2016 assessment conducted a few months before the Oroville incident, were already past that cut off. They needed to be updated and enhanced in order to prevent future crises. In the years following the catastrophe, that is what took place at the Oroville Dam. In order to make repairs and enhancements, more than a billion dollars had been spent by 2018. This includes completely reconstructing the main spillway and equipping it with contemporary technology to monitor any potentially hazardous pressure builds ups. Additionally, the emergency spillway's rock foundations were strengthened by construction workers. The dam was deemed to be dependable and safe according to a safety evaluation in 2020. Although the emergency spillway hasn't been utilized since 2017, if it is, the hillside shouldn't erode. The updated and new main spillway has been utilized on a few times. It was most last used to release a little stream of water in March 2023. The Oroville accident didn't result in any fatalities in the end, but it could have been far worse on another day. The entire disaster served as a valuable lesson. Dams are strong, hazardous constructions, and we should never disregard the warning indications when it comes to our safety. What do you think of this catastrophe that was only just avoided at the last second? Tell us in the comments section below. Additionally, you should watch our film about them if you want to learn about some other structures that also went horribly wrong. We appreciate your time and hope to see you in the next video.